So welcome to Challenge the Road. We're in the Q5 hybrid, new one. Just picked it up a week ago. And I'm gonna give you a long-term review on should you have an electric, should you have a hybrid, why I've gone back to hybrid from full electric. So let's get on with this. Right, number one, the first thing, if you've got a full electric car, you've got to have a seven kilowatt charger. I made a mistake, as in I had the three pin plug, I thought I would be okay. I was in some ways, but three or four times I got caught out. Now, how I got caught out, I was gonna go up to Twickenham to watch the rugby, and I had about enough miles to get there and back. And then my wife said, can you drop the Izzy at hockey? Right, okay, yeah, I'll do that. So I thought I'd do that, and then I realized that to go to hockey and then get back, I was within one mile, one mile of range. I thought, okay, we'll try and do it. So I went, someone else rung me, said, Richard, could you come and help me? And I said, I can't, I can't come and help you. He said, I've got, no, <laughs> I won't have any range. They're like, what, you've got all them cars, you've got all, I said, I know, but this one's full electric, I can't, if I go to, Izzy's hockey, go from the hockey, give you a hand, come back and pick her up, and then go back, then go to Twickenham, then come back, I'm 30 miles out. I said, I can't do it. And it, for the first time, you start to feel really restricted in having the car. So point one, you really want a fast charger because if I'd had that, then probably I would have had the full sort of 260 miles. But when I went out, I only had about 190, which wasn't quite enough. So that's a bit of a mistake. And if you're getting an electric car, I would definitely say you have to have the seven kilowatt or the 22 kilowatt charger. The hybrid, I think you're absolutely fine on a, a three pin. It'd be nice to have a seven, but the three pin is fine. The other thing, Q4 and Q5, Audi, why did you do this? You put the chargers on the different sides, on the different cars. So it's become a bit annoying. So my wife can go in and go in front ways fine, I have to reverse in to get mine to work. So it's a little bit of a pain, Audi, why'd you do it? It's annoying. So that's the number one, you've got to have the quick charger. If you haven't, I think you're gonna struggle. Number two, now you're gonna find this really annoying with an electric car, okay, the range. Now we're in England, it is cold, cold in the winter. What happens, this range plummets, right? Now having it all winter, the Q4, when I get in, I have it on fan one, 19. Don't touch it, don't put the heating on. You put the heating on, you'll lose 20, 25 miles in range at least, right? So I was running it and all I'd do, put the electric seat on, that's what you need to do. If you put the electric seat, it hardly uses any electricity. You touch that fan, all over, game over. You just go 200 to like 160 very very annoying that is and that is a big problem with these electric cars you can lose range as quick as anything the other thing I had which was strange was I would go out have 180 miles drive a mile and have 150 and I haven't done anything which used to really annoy me and I'd be doing like really efficient driving as well so that's one thing with the electric cars the hybrid it's no problem at all because when it's cold, it'll pick up and use the, the engine. So this is the other thing, you get in the electric car in the morning, if you wanna heat the car, you just forget, you just lose 10, 15% of range. This one, this hybrid, no problem. It'll kick off to petrol, give you everything you need, not use some of the electric that's there, and there's no way in England I can carry on being 19 and one on the fan. It's just not happening. So that's point number two of these electric cars you have them you don't really know how much you are okay another really interesting thing go on the motorway now go on the motorway you will lose 20 percent 20 percent of your range on electric straight away you start pushing on on the motorway is 25 that was the figures i had in this it will kick to petrol which is the most efficient you start gaining MP mpg same as we used to in the old days we'd think you know what we'll make it go a little bit further and a little bit further the electric one motorways good night now the only way would be to probably have tesla's charging network or whatever but longer journeys are just a nightmare so that's point number two 
you won't have the range you think, especially in the winter. You won't be able to use everything you want. And in the summer, you don't want to put the aircon on because that what uses it as well. So it's not good for that. So that's why I'm back in the hybrid. So that's point two covered. Let's go to point three. So point three, I feel happy in the hybrid because I can go anywhere. I can get fuel. Well, I can't at the moment because I keep bloody protesters, but I could get fuel anywhere normally and go anywhere. Also, this new Q5, 40 miles of electric. Perfect, 40 miles, no hassle, can go, charge it if I want. I am not restricted. In the electric car, 100% your life is restricted because if you have a change of plan, you've got a problem. You won't be able to do it. So I absolutely love the hybrid to tell the truth. And I feel like I've got electric when I need it, but I've got all the things of that petrol cover and I can go to a garage any time and fill up But with the electric one. I mean, if you stop in an electric car, which happened to a friend of mine, what happens when you run out? Yeah, apparently even it locks the doors. You can't even get out. So hybrid is definitely the way to go. I wouldn't be getting a full electric car. You may feel like you're doing everything for the planet and that, but yourself, you're just going to be restricted, restricted, controlled. You won't know where to where to go in the end, and you'll be like me, and you end up going, I just need to get back to a hybrid. If you've got children and you're doing stuff with them, part is different thing. I, I wouldn't do it. I just think it'd just be too stressful because the mileage, you just don't really know where you are. So that's point three. I'd stick with a hybrid. So point four, I'm going to talk about anxiety of an electric car. Now, I'm fortunate I don't overly suffer from anxiety or worry or, um, but when I get it, I, I feel quite anxious sometimes and I'm always looking at the mileage. And also you're always going slowly everywhere. You feel like you can't go fast because if you do, you've got to charge up and how much have I got? So you have like an anxiety there and, and it got worse because sometimes I had a power cut at my house for five days. So, and because I've got the free pin, I didn't have much charge anyway. So I thought what I'll do, because I've got the power cut, I'll drive out and I had like 20 miles and I'll go into town and I'll find a charger, all right? Went into town, charged it at, where was I at? Tesco's, 30 minutes, I got three miles charge on their free charger there, three miles. I then thought there's one at the golf club. I'll go to the golf club, all right, off to the golf club get there no one there perfect lovely jubbly reverse it in plug it in card the card thing's not working bib nothing card out of order go in the reception it's oh yes out of order sir what i can't get any power anywhere so that point four of anxiety i then I think I had like five miles or something, and it's like six miles to get home. I've done it, but I had to drive at 15 mile an hour. So anxiety and stress in them, I think is too high. It's too high for me, and I don't even suffer from anxiety, but I, I think I would a lot more with that car. You're always worried. Any change, it's a problem. So if you've got any sort of anxiety, I wouldn't go full electric. So number five, and the last one, Let's just do a little bit of a, a real comparison on costs and electric and hybrid. Now, I've worked out that with this one, I think the, the other Q5 I've got does about 24, 25 miles. This one does about 40 on the, the electric side and I've got the petrol back up. I know we're spending about 60 pound on fuel and we could get maybe a little bit more efficient. If I had the slightly faster charger at home, I think I could get more. So and get that bill down, maybe 40 pound. It's costing about 60, 70 pound to charge, maybe a bit more. So there's no saving. Don't think you're getting an electric car over a hybrid and you're saving, because you're not. So cost wise, there's no real difference. Also the cost of charging when I've been out actually keeps going up. So when I've been out and done a charge, I got 80 miles, I think for about 20 pounds. Seems like quite a lot. And I quite like going to the garage sometimes. 
I like going there. I can get some sweets and some stuff for the kids because as soon as they get in the car, all they say is, Dad, you got any food? Not how's your day? You had a nice day, Dad? No, just have you got any food? So I have to go to the garage anyway to get some food. So I might as well get some fuel. And it's only costing like 60 pound. I mean, this, this hybrid for myself, I'm really gonna test it out, but I think I can be like 40 pound a month on fuel, fuel 12 to 1500 miles a month. And if I was doing longer journeys and I was doing more miles, 100% I'd have this hybrid. I think this Q5 is a fantastic car. Now in the Q4, it doesn't drive as well as these Q5s. The suspension isn't as good. The back of the car jumps. You go over bumps, the kids in the back, ooh, 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 because they've done it too stiff. This Q5 has been out a long time. And by being out a long time, everything is right on this car everything is right i can't pick too many holes in this car and this is a low spec one this is an s line but i just wanted the rear camera which it comes now with it's got 19 inch rims the other one we got's got 21 i've got no problems with potholes tires i've got loads of profile i can drive anywhere i've got a brilliant ride so this q5 hybrid is absolutely at the top of its game that's why i'm in one that's why I'm driving one. You imagine all the cars I've had and stuff, and this car just keep coming back to it. So if you could get a hybrid Q5, I definitely would. I think electric is fine as long as you're doing short journeys and you're not too worried that things are going to change. Yeah, go with an electric one, you'll be fine. But if you have change and you're doing stuff and you're out and you don't want the hassle of having to plug in all the time and wait and all these different bits, then go with the hybrid and that's where I am so I've done six months in the Q4 happy to do that fine but hybrid is definitely the way to go so that is a long-term review don't know if I can give you much more information on it but I, I recommend a hybrid absolutely hope you enjoyed that please like and subscribe to our channel we've got more coming soon see you soon